Number 10, Polyodontia. Do us a favor and smile, okay? Now go ahead and open your mouth so you can show off all the teeth that you have. More than likely, about 99% of you watching all have 32 teeth, or at least your maximum at one time was about 32 teeth. However, for some people out there, they honestly have a lot more. And this is because of a thing called polyodontia. In short, polyodontia is an instance where a human mouth has more teeth than it's supposed to. Sometimes it occurs with just having a few extra teeth. And sometimes it's something that can manifest in many more teeth being grown throughout the entire mouth, including places that I myself don't feel comfortable talking about because I might get sick. Needless to say, it's not a natural thing, but it does happen naturally in certain people. For example, there was a young boy in India who had polyodontia and had it to such a bad degree that he had to get surgery to remove, get this, 200 teeth from his mouth. Think about that for a second, having that many teeth in your mouth just growing at will. And if you're curious, yes, this is a world record. Or at least it was until 2019 when 500 teeth were removed from one boy's mouth. Now, sometimes this doesn't hurt per se in having extra teeth. Freddie Mercury, for example, had four extra teeth and it was said to have helped his singing voice. Number 9. Fish Car Fish are something that is all over the world and quite possibly something that is in your house right now. But you might have noticed that having a fish can be sometimes eh, a little boring because the fish is literally confined to a tank. And even the most elaborate of them can still be boring to watch when they're just kind of swimming around. Plus, think of the fish. They're the ones having to live in and be confined by a tank all of the time. So a lab in the Netherlands decided to go and fix this fishy problem in arguably the most unique way ever. They made a car for a fish. Now, before you start saying that a car-shaped tank isn't an improvement, this is much more than that. In fact, it's a car that said fish can drive. So I know you're asking now, well, how does that work? The car is basically a fish tank on a motorized wheel pad. The fish swims throughout the tank as you would expect it to, but what also is on the car is a camera, one that is aimed to watch the fish and then relay the directions to the motor so that it can move exactly where the fish wants to go. To be clear, the fish is in no danger here as the car is at very slow speeds but it's easily one of the most unique things you're gonna see all day. And the fact that someone both came up with this unique idea and made it work, that's pretty cool. Number eight, colored honey. Picture right now a giant vat of honey. What's the color you're seeing? Some would say gold, others brown, maybe a shade of red or amber. There are honestly a lot of colors that it could be. But in France, something rather odd was being found by beekeepers. Simply put, they were finding unnatural colors of honey blues, greens, and others. This is not a natural thing and it's really never been found before this first spotting, which made it all the more curious that it was found at all. Now the obvious answer would be to say that these bees simply made a new shade, which could be attributed to evolution, which would be a logical theory if it were true. While there is always a first of something, this was not the case here, as it was very specific bees in a certain area that were having this happen, not bees all over. So what caused this change in the honey? Well, candy. No, really. The aviary where the bees were located was next to a candy plant of sorts, and they used waste to help the aviary. The bees eventually found the candy, believed to be M&Ms, and they liked the taste and started to eat them. The result was multicolored honey. Apparently, though, the honey of these colors had a weird taste, and thus they weren't made available to stores everywhere, and the bees were taken off their sugar high. Sorry about that. Number 7. Hologram Circus Once upon a time, there were few things as cool as going to the circus. They had entertainers, they had acrobats, and most importantly, they had animals. From lions, tigers, to bears and elephants and more, the circus had it all. And for the longest time, this was deemed okay by pretty much everyone. But eventually, as people started to realize that people were basically being cruel to animals in order to get them to perform, people started to rise up and say that places like the circus shouldn't have any animals in their act anymore. Fast forward to now and many circuses around the world have adopted this notion. But the cost of that is the loss of animals in the event, right? Well, wrong. Because the circus in Germany went and took things in a different direction by using holograms of animals to entertain people. And this was not as easy a thing to do as you might expect. They had to use images and real-life footage of the animals to make them look real and move as you'd expect. But the payoff was worth it. Not to mention, via these holograms, you could do more with them than regular animals and put on more of a visual spectacle without putting anyone or any animals at risk. Number 6. Car Vending Machine What was it like getting your first car? How long did you pour over various ads or car lots to try and find the perfect car for you that fit your price range and everything you were looking for? 
it likely was kind of a massive effort, right? Someone desired to take that away and thus they made a car vending machine called Carvana. And yes, this is real. Though to be fair, it's not just as simple as putting a coin in a machine and then picking the car you want. Rather, you have to buy and order everything via an online surface that Carvana provides. But once everything is ready, you go to a local Carvana, of which there are over 20 in the United States, and then you'll honestly get to put a coin into a device, and then the car is brought down to you for you to drive away, as if you had just gotten it from the machine. You have to admit, it is kind of clever, and it's quite the visual for those who are aiming to get a car in a very stylish way. It's probably super Instagram friendly. Number 5. Spider Kingdom Spiders are a creature that many fear, and one big fear is walking into a spider web with spiders in them. Ugh. So imagine the horror when someone who fears arachnids find out that in places like Australia and New Zealand, there are entire fields covered in spiders and spider webs. What might surprise you is that this is a natural occurrence. You see, in areas of Australia, New Zealand, and even Pakistan one time, there would be massive floods in the native homes of the spiders. Knowing that they had to get away to survive, they would flee to fields or even trees, and once they got there, they would basically overlay the entire area with webs, giving an oddly beautiful but very scary look to the area. Eventually, the spiders move back, but when they consume the fields or trees, it's truly a complete consuming of the area, and many stay away from them when they do. Because if you go near them, you're not going near a man-owned area anymore. Rather, you're entering a spider kingdom. Number 4. Rainbow Eucalyptus Trees are known to be very colorful entities, especially in fall. They're famous for their variety of colors that they have all year long, especially during the fall when they're known to change colors. But in the case of the rainbow eucalyptus, it's honestly a bit different in that it's colorful all the time. And that color palette is indeed rainbow color. And to be clear, this isn't a pretty nickname. This is a scientific designation, and for good reason. When the rainbow eucalyptus starts off its life, it's basic green. However, as it starts to grow more into adulthood, it starts to shed some of the green, and various other colors of the rainbow appear right next to one another, as if the tree itself was a literal rainbow. Reds, blues, yellow, orange, purple, and all the shades you can imagine appear on this tree. And what's more, these colors don't stay stagnant. They go and change over time, so it's a shifting colored rainbow tree, making it all the more unique. And if you look at these various pictures of the rainbow eucalyptus, you'll see how every single one is unique. Truly a wonder from Mother Nature. Number 3. Bee Wave I've already shown you one interesting byproduct of bees, but this one is a bit more physical. Because whether you realize it or not, bees well and truly work together as a hive. That's how they get food, that's how they make honey, that's how they go and attack enemies. And they can even coordinate their movements when they're all together to make waves. Take a look. This isn't just a cool visual effect, though it is definitely a cool visual effect. Rather, it's a defensive mechanism. If the bees think there are predators nearby, they'll go and flap their wings and bodies in sync, so they can make these waves to go and scare off predators, further showing that the hive is willing to come together and then stay together. Number 2. Flying with Birds When you see birds in the sky, there's an instant desire to go and fly with them. Singular flight of a human is something we really haven't been able to crack yet. And no, jetpacks and paragliders don't count, sorry. However, if you know the right people, you can go and fly with the birds in your own way. Meet Christian Molek, an ornithologist who realized that nearby geese were having trouble migrating due to the air traffic of nearby planes. So ever since 1994, he's gotten an ultralight to go and lead the birds to their migratory grounds. He takes the lead position of the Flying V and guides them from Germany to France, and if you're lucky, you can honestly go and fly with him. And if you've seen the movie Fly Away Home, it's basically the same concept. Number 1. Spider Silk Goats This is exactly what it sounds like. Scientists have found a way to put a spider's ability to make silk into goats, and yes, this is real. You see, goats produce milk, but some scientists figured that spider DNA could be used to insert silk into the milk, and thus produce spider silk en masse. But why do this at all? That's because spider silk has one of the highest tensile strength attributes in the world. Tensile strength is the resistance of a material to breaking under pressure, and having a good tensile strength can be a benefit to bandages, bulletproof armor, and things that need to be able to resist an impact. But spiders alone can't make this in great enough numbers, thus they decided to get goats to help out. And apparently they don't really mind. 
it's been so successful, this process, that BioSteel was born from this, which is the official name for this particular kind of spider silk. It's 7 to 10 times as strong as steel and can stretch for some time without breaking or losing its abilities. Number 10. Giant Moth Tarantula One of the most disturbing species recently discovered is a disgusting combination of a moth and a tarantula. While this creature is perfectly harmless, it's still pretty freaky to look at. It's known properly as a polyphemus moth, and it looks like a fat spider that grew moth wings. It's a wonder this thing can even fly. It's really super big, roughly the size of your hand, and also incredibly rare. They have a wingspan of up to 6 inches, and the good news is that they're not very threatening. Just like other moths and butterflies, these animals can't bite even if they wanted to, and that's because they have no mouth parts. The weird moth tarantula can be found usually on oak trees, eating the leaves, and they only come out from between May and July, and they live for just a few weeks, laying their eggs and then dying. In the fall, you can find caterpillars turning into chrysalises strung up beneath trees all the way until the summer. This strange animal might not be a brand new species, but it's definitely rare, and it's freaky enough to put on this list. Number 9. Sea Slug Just recently, a new species of sea slug was discovered in Thailand. This little guy is fascinating to look at with a bright fleshy body and hairs that are tinted purple and white. It was discovered by divers near Koh Tao and was recently described in a research paper in which it was named properly as the Unidentia alishe. This is another stunning example of the biodiversity of sea slugs found all across the coral reefs of Thailand. It's also the newest of over 150 sea slug species in the area. It was first recorded by divers in 2009, working on a coral nursery project, but it took a little while for this creature to be put into the records. It was named after a researcher from the University of Guadalajara, and it only lives in the area around Kotao. You can't find this adorable little slug anywhere else in the world. While there are definitely similar sea slugs found across Asia, specifically in the waters near Japan, this flesh-colored marine thing is totally unique to the Gulf of Thailand. Number 8. Smog Lizard a new species of smog lizard has been discovered. And no, it's not as large as the infamous smog dragon from the Hobbit book, but it is a pretty cool critter. If anything, this little lizard would be the closest living relative to smog. The lizard has dense armor reminiscent of alligators. It lives in rock crevices and is mostly confined to the mountains of southern Africa. But it is still unknown if it's got an affinity for treasure. In 2020, a herpetologist from South Africa's National Museum discovered the ninth species of dragon lizard under the genus Smaug. The new species is a dark lizard with pale yellow bands, and its proper name is actually Smaug swazicus, or more casually known as the Swazi dragon lizard. It grows up to 13 inches from the tip of its tail to the tip of its snout, and it's fairly big for the region. It's a wonder that researchers didn't find this lizard sooner. You may also know this type of lizard as a girdled lizard, and even though they may look ferocious, they're actually quite gentle. They're like little roving tanks that move from crevice to crevice, almost never being eaten by predators because they're so spiky and hard. Number 7. Electric Eel Scientists have known all about the electric eel for at least 250 years, but they've been missing something this whole time. In 2019, researchers unveiled a shocking discovery, pun absolutely intended. Two additional electric eel species were found, and researchers published their findings in the Journal of Natural Communications. What's really startling about the new discovery is that one of the eels found has the strongest voltage to date. It was named E. Volti, and a professor from the University of Sao Paulo claims that it can discharge voltage of 860. That's outstanding, considering that the strongest shock before that was only 650 volts. The discharge from this eel is not exactly enough to stun or paralyze a human being, since the discharge actually has a very low amperage of only about 1 amps. In comparison, a household power outlet outputs roughly 20 amps, but still, it's a pretty cool find. The eel definitely boasts enough power to scare off a predator or incapacitate a fish and then eat it. Number 6. New Spiders Depending on your feelings, this next discovery could be great or it could be a total nightmare. A minimum of six new species of spider were found in the past couple of years, and they've been named after a series of popular children's books from the 1970s. The books were written by Enid Blyton, and some of the most famous in the series were The Goblin's Looking Glass and Billy's Little Boats. 
Because these children's books inspired many young kids to go on and become scientists later on in life, it seemed fitting for the new species of spiders to be named after their characters. A professor from the National Institute of Fundamental Studies in Sri Lanka says that there are nine goblin spider species, and they're all named after characters in the book, with six of them being completely new to science. Two of them were reported for the first time outside of Australia. And most of them were discovered in Sri Lanka, a country that has at least 45 species of spider, and it's two times smaller than the state of Virginia. That's a whole lot of arachnids. Goblin spiders are actually quite difficult to spot, as they're only a few millimeters in length. They live on forest floors and are threatened by human development like most of the animals and insects in this small Asian country. Number 5. Parasite Wasps Wasps are scary enough without being parasites. A new species of wasp discovered is one of only a few found to be parasitic. The new wasp, which was discovered with help from the Rice University, is being described as an ecosystem engineer. It's at the center of a disturbing soap opera filled with vampires, mummies, and parasites. It's known as a gall wasp, and they're tiny insects with the ability of casting biochemical spells. It's actually kind of incredible. When the wasp lays its eggs on the leaves of an oak tree, they leave a chemical behind that programs the tree to unknowingly produce a sort of tumor. This is also known as a gall. The tumor, or gall, will grow to shelter the egg, and then it works to feed the larval wasp that hatches inside of it. The gall creates a sort of feeding frenzy. They attract herbivorous caterpillars who like to feed on the gall tissue. The caterpillars are then surprised when they find themselves being consumed by a bunch of wasp hatchlings. It's a vicious cycle, in which the wasps create an ideal feeding environment for other insects on the oak leaves, allowing their young to have food once they hatch from within. Number 4. 15 New Geckos Just a few years ago in Myanmar, 15 new species of gecko were found, and they were found in the space of only two weeks. This is probably one of the least explored countries on the planet due to its chaotic government and miserable track record of genocide. But in October of 2016, a team of scientists found all 15 of these geckos inside isolated limestone habitats in two different regions of the country. These new geckos are thought to be limited to the small limestone blocks in which they were found. They live among the caves, towers, and hills of the rock, and are each a unique species not found anywhere else in the world, or even anywhere else in that country. This is a prime example of secluded evolution. Basically, in a single area filled with hills and caves, only a few select species of animal like geckos, snails, and fish are thriving. It's almost like an enclosed ecosystem. The animals don't need to move away because they have all they would ever need located within a small region. It's allowed the 15 different species of gecko to take their own evolutionary courses, even though they live within walking distance of one another, and they've likely never met in thousands of years. Number 3. Ants in the Backyard In this next story, an expert on ants found a new emergent species, and he didn't have to go too far to do it. Jack Longino is an international ant expert who's traveled the world documenting all the different species of ants. But for his latest discovery in 2018, he needed only walk into his backyard. It was just after dark and he caught a glimpse of four ants inside his garden that he didn't recognize. The next day, he dug into his garden and found even more specimens. He recognized them as ants he'd seen in the tropics and wondered exactly what they were doing in Utah of all places. Jack took a few specimens back to his lab and found out that he had an entirely undiscovered species living in his garden. The embarrassing part for the ant expert was that they weren't even introduced to the area by commercial or human means. The ants in his garden were native to the area. He guessed that the ants had been living underground for centuries, but after 150 years of human irrigation, they'd been forced to move back to the surface. Number 2. So Many Plants When most of us look at a garden or when we take a stroll through the forest, we don't see that many plant species. For example, I see trees and bushes, but if you're a plant expert, you probably see thousands of different species on a single walk through the park. In 2019 alone, 10 new and exciting plant species were discovered by garden scientists, but that's actually a pretty small number. Every year, the Missouri Botanical Gardens Science and Conservation staff find and name roughly 200 different species of plants that are new to science. That makes up roughly 10% of all plant-related discoveries by scientists throughout the world on an annual basis. Most of these new discoveries are found in tropical areas, but sometimes the new ones spread up in the United States. 
For example, a brand new species of something called Trillium was discovered in Georgia in 2019 by a botanist. But it's not as easy as just looking at the plant. Because so many of them look the same, researchers have to take samples back to a lab and use genetic markers to study the species and find out if one is different from the others that have already been discovered. It's an entire process and an extremely complicated one. The fact that over 200 species of plant are discovered each year, it's kind of a little boggling to the mind. Number 1. Nightmare Fish The coolest recent animal discovery is definitely the nightmare fish. Scientists have discovered a very black fish that lives somewhere around 6,500 feet below the surface of the ocean. It is among the darkest creatures ever found by scientists. According to ABC News, the fish is being called the Ultra Black Fish, and it's so dark that it normally only appears as a silhouette. When one is captured on video, it looks like something has been photoshopped out of the picture because it's so dark. It looks more like an afterimage than an actual creature. Even out of the water, these fish look extremely black. But that's not the only thing that makes this new species scary. It's also horrendously ugly. It appears to have sharp teeth, pale white eyes, and it kind of looks like something birthed from an alternate dimension. And the reason the ultra black fish is so dark is because it reflects less than 0.5% of the light that hits it. In simpler terms, it absorbs almost all the light that touches it, making it so black it's nearly invisible. Number 10. Frozen Iguanas it's not every day that something terrifying falls from the sky, but when it does, it's generally pretty shocking. Florida residents in 2020 got the shock of a lifetime when frozen iguanas began to fall from the sky. Yep, you thought 2020 got weird in March? This was the warning sign that this year was going to get very bad. This happened all the way back in January, when the state was dealing with some seriously cold temperatures. Even places like Disney World's Blizzard Beach needed to close because of the ridiculous chill in the air. And to make things worse, during the night when the temperature fell all the way into the 30s, frozen iguanas began to fall on people's heads. Of course, the iguanas didn't actually fall from the sky, they fell from trees. But the effect of an iguana falling on a person's head is the exact same regardless. Miami even had to send out a warning that because of the low temperatures, the iguanas could freeze and fall off their branches and potentially smack somebody on the top of the skull. The reason for this was quite simple. Iguanas are cold-blooded animals that rely on the warm environment to regulate their body temperature. When the temperature drops below 50 degrees, they essentially go into hibernation. And when that happens, they start to fall out of the trees like frozen green hail. But don't worry, even when the iguanas began to fall from the trees, they weren't dead. Their bodies just got stiff because of the cold and they could no longer hold onto the branches. When the temperatures rose again, the iguanas got their blood nice and warm and most of them went back about their business. This is obviously still a precarious situation though, seeing as some iguanas can weigh up to 20 pounds. That's not something you want falling on your head. Number 9. Fallen Angel You may have seen the bizarre pictures circulating that appear to show a man with chicken wings and a white robe fallen from the sky. While at first glance this may appear like an actual angel, albeit with the ugliest and most foul wings you've ever seen in your life, it's probably not actually a sentinel from heaven. Some of the photos claim that the angel fell from the skies over London, but that's not quite true. It's actually an art installation. According to Snopes, somebody decided to use the weird images to create a fake news story and get it trending all over the internet. Some sources even claimed that the photo was captured in Texas. As if any kind of angelic being would ever fall from the Texas sky unless it was shot down, right? Unfortunately, the angel is actually a hyper-realistic sculpture crafted from reinforced polymer and silica. It was also created by a Beijing artist way back in 2008. Pretty much nothing to do with the fake stories that have been circulating. Just imagine if those nasty chicken wings were the real deal for angels. How would they even fly with such nasty appendages? It's kind of creepy, right? Number 8. Raining Frogs When most people think about Canada, they probably think about igloos, hockey, and a lot of snow. But did you know Canada is home to a rather freaky phenomenon? One of the most frightening things that ever happened in the frozen north was back in 1921, when frogs literally started falling from the sky. This happened in Calgary, and it was the middle of August when the green frogs started slapping down on the sidewalk. And this wasn't the first case either of weird critters falling from the Canadian clouds. Global News reported that back in 1857, live lizards fell upon Montreal. In 1895, enormous black ants fell on the city of Winnipeg during a thunderstorm, and in 1903, it rained fish in Moose Jaw. It turns out that Canada has quite a long history of terrifying animals raining down from the heavens. 
So why is this happening? Well, experts believe the most likely explanation is that frogs, ants, and lizards all got caught up in a tornado that passed over water, and that tornado developed into a thunderstorm. All the creatures that got sucked up into the funnel of the tornado actually fell back down to Earth quite far from where they had originally been picked up, thanks to the movement of the thunderstorm. As for those frogs in 1921, there's no information about whether they lived when they hit the ground, but local reports did claim the neighborhood cats had a pretty good feast that day. Number 7. Boiled Bats It's already terrifying enough that bats can be found roaming through the sky at night, looking for blood to suck and fruit to eat. The last thing we need is boiling bats falling from the sky in heaps. Yet this is exactly what happened in Australia a few years back when they had a brutal heat wave. At least 200 bats fell from the sky as temperatures rose to a blistering 111.5 degrees Fahrenheit. That's 44.2 degrees Celsius. It happened in New South Wales, and the victims were part of a colony of flying fox bats that live near a small train station. Volunteers tried to rescue the bats, but according to local reports, at least 204 of the animals dropped dead and fell to the ground. According to the colony manager for the Campbelltown bats, they basically boiled. The colony manager said that the heat affected the animals' brains, and their brains fried like a toaster in the bathtub and that was the end of them. While this is indeed a terrifying story, nobody was really in danger. The little bats only weighed about two pounds, so they weren't really gonna hurt anybody, and the hot weather was really the only dangerous thing there. But it's still pretty horrifying to know that the air is getting so hot on our planet that some creatures are literally boiling alive and then dropping to their deaths. And now for number six, but first, be sure to subscribe to World List if you haven't already, and let us know what topics you'd like to see in the comments below. Number six, a space station. Australia is not only the home of boiling bats, but about 40 years ago, it was also the location where NASA's Skylab space station fell to Earth. The space station was defunct, and it came crashing back down in July of 1979, raining chaos down upon Western Australia, with huge chunks of hardware splashing into the Indian Ocean and even scattering litter across some towns. Imagine standing in your backyard, minding your own business, and suddenly a giant piece of a space station comes hurtling through the atmosphere and lands on your head. It doesn't get much more terrifying than that. Luckily, nobody was injured when the space station tumbled back through our atmosphere. However, the Australian town of Esperance did charge NASA $400 for littering because a bunch of debris from the space station ended up falling all across their town. Whether NASA ever paid the fine is still a mystery, but we do hope they did the right thing. As for the Skylab space station, it had a fairly good run in space. It was launched in 1973, manned three times by mission crews, and then abandoned after 1974. Its orbit decayed over time until it finally slipped out of the sky and landed back down to Earth. Number 5. The Great Kentucky Meat Shower The Great Kentucky Meat Shower sounds like some kind of weird Kentucky barbecue party, but it is in fact an event that occurred on March 3, 1876, when enormous chunks of flesh rained down from the skies over Olympia Springs. According to the New York Times article published the subsequent week, the phenomenon occurred when a farmer's wife was making soap on her porch. This woman's house ended up being right at the epicenter of a meat hailstorm. The farmer's wife claimed that it was as she made soap that the pieces of meat began to fall from the sky, splattering wetly all around her. Most of the pieces were at least two by two, with some being even larger. The meat looked like soggy chunks of beef, and apparently two gentlemen even tasted it and determined it was either lamb or deer. One local hunter even identified the meat as being from a bear. Obviously, everyone will always have their own two cents, even when it comes to mystery meat falling down from the sky on a poor woman's farm. However, the meat was actually sent to the Newark Scientific Association for analysis. It was then determined that the meat was lung tissue from either a horse or a human baby. There was also some muscle tissue and some cartilage. The most popular theory after the analysis was that it had been buzzards who had vomited up their meal when flying over Kentucky, and their regurgitations just so happened to fall on this poor woman's porch while she made her soap. However, to this day, nobody knows for sure how it happened. Number 4. Blue Ice This next story is not only terrifying, it's absolutely disgusting. If you've ever wondered what happens when you use the toilet on an airplane, the answer is blue ice. As unrealistic as this may sound, there's a very small chance that when you're walking innocently down the street, you could be smacked in the head by a frozen piece of human waste. 
popularly known as blue ice. If you need proof, it's already happened. Just recently in 2018, a frozen ball of human poop weighing about 22 pounds fell onto a village near New Delhi. People at first thought it was some kind of alien object, but the authorities eventually figured out it was actually frozen sewage that leaked from a commercial aircraft waste system while the plane was flying overhead. This is not the kind of threat most of us want to be thinking about in our daily lives. There are at least 10,000 airplanes in the sky at any one time, and if 20-pound chunks of poop begin falling out of all of them randomly, well, we may as well be in a war zone. Luckily, it's probably a lot less dramatic than I'm making it out to be. According to an aviation expert from CQ University, events like the one in Delhi are actually pretty rare. This is because waste is typically disposed of when an aircraft is sitting on the ground. The issue with the case from New Delhi is that there must have been a leak in the system that caused the poop to fall to Earth. According to ABC News, between 1979 and 2003, there were at least 27 chunks of blue ice reported were big enough to smash through a roof or a car windshield with one that even did some serious damage to a church in England. But don't worry, it doesn't happen that much anymore. Number 3. Blood Rain In a small Spanish town, it has rained blood. This happened just a few years ago in the quaint little Spanish village of Zamora, when raindrops of what appeared to be actual blood began to leak out of the sky. The first thought was that some kind of hazardous chemical weapon was being used against them, and the next thought was that an Old Testament plague was upon them. Luckily, the rain never came down in torrents, and after scientists collected a few samples of the supposed blood and did tests at a university, they were able to figure out that the liquid was in fact ordinary rainwater, but infused with a freshwater green microalgae that made the water turn red. Yes, standing in the street when it rained blood would have been absolutely terrifying while it was happening, but luckily it was just some microorganism kind of stuff. According to Fox News, the microalgae probably came from North America, blown across the entire ocean on westerly winds. Number 2. Fish Monsters Fish monsters falling from the sky is not something you ever want to see on the evening news, but that's exactly what happened in Alaska when horrible sea monsters began to rain down from above. Locals in Fairbanks were unlucky enough to find lampreys dropping randomly out of the sky all around town. If you're not sure, a lamprey is a disgusting monster that kind of looks like an eel. This thing is about a foot long, and it has the most horrifying teeth of any sea monster in existence. It's like a mix between an eel, a fish, and a leech. Obviously, the big question here is why the terrifying fish are dropping from the sky at all. These things have been found all over Fairbanks, and according to the Alaska Department of Fish and Game, it's all because seagulls are plucking them out of the river and then dropping them through their bills while flying. Basically, the gulls go down and scoop up the fish from the mud in their bills. But they're greedy birds and they take too many, so sometimes the extra fish monsters slip out and fall onto some poor grandmother's garden. Number 1. Meteorite Murder Most of us don't live in fear of being killed by a meteorite. It's just not something that we contemplate in our daily lives. But according to some new evidence, we may have to give it more thought going forward. In 2020, researchers finally discovered the first credible case of someone being killed by a meteorite falling to Earth. This apparently happened on August 22nd of 1888, when a falling meteorite hit a man in the head and killed him in Iraq. According to the researchers, with all the documents found in the state archives, they now have proved the very first death by meteorite. This is undisputable proof that the Earth is much more fragile than we think, and that we all might be in serious danger of some kind of space bombardment. While so far only one man has been legitimately murdered by a meteorite, there could be more in the future. NASA's Fireball database says that at least 822 meteorites have been large enough to explode in our atmosphere since records began in 1988. Some scientists even say that at least 17 meteors hit the surface of our planet every single day. That means it's just a matter of luck and timing whether you get a space rock to your head. Who knows? Maybe in the future, we'll all need to walk around with helmets on to protect our precious brains from the threat of meteorites. Number 10. Mahalo versus the Porcupine It's well known in the animal kingdom that porcupines are creatures that you don't want to mess with for the most basic of reasons. They're quills. They'll stick you with them, and it's going to hurt getting them out. But don't take my word for it. Take Mahalo, a dog from Canada who didn't think that when he approached the porcupine in question, he would end up looking like this. So how could this happen to this poor dog? That would be dumb luck. Because you see Mahalo and his fellow dog pals were playing on their owner's land, just minding their own business when they happened to stumble upon a porcupine. 
They decided to try and play with the animal, but didn't realize that porcupines really don't want to play with friendly dogs. The porcupine was irritated, to the extent that it was so angry at these dogs that it almost barbed them to death with its quills. So yeah, it's easy to look at the picture of Mahalo with the barbs and laugh, but it did almost kill him, and his fellow dogs were just as injured. It was so rough that the quills penetrated his skin and nearly penetrated his heart. If it weren't for his owner getting him to the vet to have surgery, he likely would have died. Although he did live, as did the other dogs, the process of getting the barbs out of his body was not a painless experience. He'll likely never want to meet a porcupine again. How about you, though? Have you ever handled a porcupine? What about a skunk? These are two of the most common animals that no normal person ever wants to closely encounter. At least if they want to keep their skin from getting punched through with holes or they don't want to smell like a dumpster. Tell me about your experience if you've ever had one and then remember to hit subscribe. That is, if you haven't subscribed already, you want to hit that red button to stay up to date on all the awesome content coming out right here on World List every day. Number 9. Polar Bear Meets a Sled Dog this particular tale is one of two halves, so don't judge fully because of the first part, or you might miss the moral of the whole tale. In Manitoba, Canada, a person and their sled dog team went to a protected wildlife sanctuary in order to try and get some up-close and personal footage of polar bears who were at the sanctuary. They would get their chance, but not in the way you'd expect. Frighteningly, after chaining up one of their sled dogs, a polar bear went right up to the sled dog and started to play with it. This was a situation where the dog owners weren't sure what was going to happen for obvious reasons. Polar bears can be nice, but they're still bears, and they're known to lash out. But in this case, the bear really didn't seem to want to play with the dog, though the dog didn't understand that at first. The bear started to nudge the dog to tease it, and then went and hugged the dog later, and eventually the dog realized what was going on. It was a heartwarming moment, which might leave you confused, because this is supposed to be about animals being jerks to one another. And that's where the other shoe drops, sadly, because at the very same sanctuary, not long after this remarkable footage was taken, three bears had to be removed after attacking some of the dogs. It just goes to show that while it's nice to see bears being playful, it's not something you should expect all the time. Be careful around bears, even if they look friendly. Number 8. Leopard vs Porcupine in Africa, there are certain reserves that house many major animals, including the Big Five, and as such, you occasionally have animals running into each other unintentionally, but then fighting very intentionally. Such was the case for one videographer who was on vacation in the reserve and was going about his day when he stumbled upon a leopard going into a culvert, and then finding out the hard way that the place was already home to a pretty large porcupine, one whose quills could easily have been a foot long. The leopard, being a major predator, was not phased by the creature and tried to attack it. But that's the rub right there. Porcupines aren't just creatures who have a defense mechanism that's great, they know how to use it. As you watch the footage, you'll see the porcupine always keeping its quills facing the cat, and even ramming into it to get the cat to back off. Sure enough, the leopard did not win the fight, which once again proves why, big or small, you don't mess with the porcupine. Number 7. Cheetah Getting Groomed by Meerkats when you look at certain animal pairings, you can't help but think that this won't go well for the lesser animal, such as if you were to go and put a cheetah and some meerkats in the same area. But that's where things get interesting in this case. Meet Kenji the cheetah, a young cheetah who is honestly one of the friendlier cheetahs you'll ever meet. He's so friendly that he wants to be good neighbors with all the animals in the surrounding pens at the reserve he's at. And what happens to be next to him? A cage of meerkats. So, being friendly, he goes and observes the meerkats up close, and even presses his body up against the cage. The meerkats, though, don't want any part of him, and start to dig under their cage so they can get closer to the cheetah to attack him, and pester him with strikes through the cage to try and get the big cat to back off. One problem, they were such ineffective strikes that the cheetah felt the meerkats were grooming him, so he continued to press his body up against the cage to be friendly, which made the meerkats all the more furious. This seems like something straight out of a comedy film. Truly the makings of a beautiful friendship. Number 6. The Tiger and Dog BFFs In Slovakia, there's a place called Oasis, and it's a refuge for certain animals, including Siberian tigers. One of them is named Surya, and she has a very interesting relationship with certain other animals that live there, mainly a trio of German shepherds. You see, these dogs belong to the owner who helps raise and protect big cats, and Surya was brought into the Oasis protected area when she was just a young cub. Therefore, these dogs were not just there since her birth, they were basically her family. 
As such, these dogs and the tiger play well together and have a relationship that honestly boggles the mind, especially when you look at the footage that the owner has captured of them playing with each other. It's even gotten to the point where Surya had a cub named Sunny, and Sunny now plays happily with the dogs as well. Though it should be noted that the German Shepherds and the Tiger do roughhouse quite a bit and can get a little physical. But it's all in good fun and love. Besides, who said families can't be jerks to each other occasionally? Number 5. Cat vs. Toy Tiger There are a lot of things that are adorable about animals, especially cats and dogs. But one thing that never ceases to amaze is the fact that sometimes they really, really don't get what's going on and act instinctively because they think they're in danger. One example of this is the case of this house cat who walks into a room to find itself looking at a stuffed toy tiger. Usually you'd think it would just observe the toy and move on, but no, it straight up attacks the tiger with a mean right hook that honestly looks rather powerful. What makes matters worse for the house cat isn't just that the owner is filming this altercation, but rather that they're making the toy tiger seem alive by moving it and interacting with the cat, and thus getting the cat even angrier and hitting it even harder. It's hilarious, but it's also kind of sad to watch this cat go at it against a toy tiger. And yet, I kind of can't look away. What about you? Number 4. Cat Boxing with a Dog if fighting fake animals wasn't enough for you, check out this cat who decides it's a great idea to go and box a real animal. In this case, the other animal is a Labrador. Matt the cat apparently really doesn't like Storm the dog, and shows that in a very rude and aggressive way by repeatedly hitting the dog boxing style, to the extent that you honestly have to wonder if it would do this to every dog or if it's just a Stormy. The sad part is that Stormy doesn't seem to fight back. She clearly just wants to play with the cat, but Matt is not having any of it. Just as bad though, the owner is laughing throughout the encounter. That's favoritism pure and simple, and that dog kind of deserves better. Number 3. Sheep Getting Revenge when you think about sheep as a whole, you likely picture them as rather docile creatures, ones that don't go and get into too much trouble aside from wandering around in places maybe they shouldn't be. But in this tale of sheep versus cat, things get physical. For whatever reason, a black cat, infamous for bringing bad luck along with it, walks into a barn where a bunch of sheep are resting in their pen. The black cat strolls on top of the pen, and a sheep notices it and gets closer to see what the cat's all about. The black cat isn't amused by this and proceeds to swipe at the sheep and hiss at the creature as if it's the true owner of the place. The sheep were not amused. When the cat thought it had won and turned its back on the sheep, the sheep lunged upward and headbutted the cat right off the pen, sending it careening to the ground and running for its life. Needless to say, it won't be counting sheep when it goes to sleep anymore. Number 2. Kangaroo vs. Goat Kangaroos are very interesting creatures when you observe them from the scope of the whole world. They have a unique shape, a unique way of getting around, and they do know how to punch and kick with the best of them. One goat found out about this the hard way. While at a reservation area, a couple stumbled upon a goat picking a fight with a kangaroo. The goat was the aggressor, and for whatever reason didn't want the kangaroo in the area, so it strutted around and tried to get the kangaroo to leave. A truly bold and rude move. But the kangaroo not only wasn't moved, it lunged at the goat and started attacking back just to prove it wouldn't be messed with. The two did your typical circling to see what would happen next, but the kangaroo got bored and hopped away, and the goat followed. Whether it's humans or animals, some people just can't leave well enough alone. Number 1. Parrot Annoys Cat to some, parrots are amazing creatures due to them being able to speak in their own way via mimicry. It's fun for many people to go and try to teach these birds new words and phrases, and even train them to have conversations. But not unlike other birds, parrots can be jerks at times as one cat will happily attest to. Because someone had the bright idea of putting this African parrot and a regular cat next to one another, and right from the start it doesn't go well for the cat. The parrot saunters over to the cat in the most comedic way possible and just starts annoying it to death, from pressing its claws upon the cat to pecking at its eyes, and at points even looking like it's removing hair from the cat itself. The cat takes it like a champ, but you can tell it's getting angrier and angrier with every single move the parrot makes, and yet the parrot isn't reading the room and thus just keeps on going. Eventually the cat has enough and makes a big swipe at the parrot, sending it flying away. There's probably a lesson to be learned here somewhere. Thanks for watching. What did you think of these animals who are frankly jerks to other animals? Which one shocked you the most? Let me know in the comments below. Be sure to subscribe to Worldlist, and I'll see you next time on the channel.